So we're here with Alan Kilshaw, uh, head of Friday's clash with Crusaders, um, following off from a good win against Sid All in the Challenge Cup. First off, there was a, some comments made by their coach in, in the aftermath of that defeat. What do you make of those? Oh, I just think um, Gav's probably shown his experience a little bit at, at this level and he's probably emotional after the game where his, his side have underperformed and if you actually looked at the game, I think some comments about refereeing decisions, but I think the ref could have probably penalised them a little bit more, but he, he wanted to let the game flow at times. Um, but we do our talking on the pitch. Um, we, we got the result, but we don't need to... Um, you know, disrespect anyone else, whether we've won or lost. Um, you know, we want to win and lose with, with, with dignity, and um, we'll review it tonight, and then we'll put it to bed. We've got a much better quality of opposition to prepare for on Friday. In the Challenge Cup, you've come up against two amateur sides so far, Sid and, and Rochdale Mayfield. Was there any difference in, in comparison to them teams? Yeah, the big rivals, aren't they? I, mean, I, I thought. Mayfield were much better. I just thought they got a bit more X factor. They've got you know Shuey, he, he can make a break or an offload. You've got you know the Sheridans who are dangerous with the ball. You know Matt Callan can can pull up with something with his experience and Ogden at dummy half as well. So I did think Mayfield were much more of a threat and it was a much tougher game. So you know if you're asking a bit of comparison there, I'd think Mayfield would be better than than, than Siddall on the day and. Um, It'll be interesting to see the result between those two after we've played them. Moments ago, he's just been drawn at home to Witness Vikings in the next round. Is that a big tie you're looking forward to in the, in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, it's down the track. We've got you know, some important games coming up in, in the next two games, which you know the top of the Super League. They're playing very well, um, and it'd be great for the for the club. And it's good it's in Scotland and two two famous teams going against each other. So. We'll, um, we'll get excited about it, you know, close to the time. But it's a good draw for the club, and I'm, you know, happy for the, the chairman and, and, and the directors because hopefully it'll um, be financially rewarding as well as the, the, the rugby element of it as well. This Friday you take the trip to the Crusaders. It's a bit of a quick turnaround. Are there any knocks in the lads, or are you going with the full strength? Um, no, we'll be as we were last week with, with Wayne and, and John are obviously available. So we'll pick out of those. Uh, I think we've got around 23 to go from Jack Francis, uh, Dave Cookson, Mike Ratu and uh, Lewis Galbraith are the, are the only ones who aren't available and um, we'll probably have one dual, re dual registration player as well so um, a few bumps and bruises, it's short turnaround as you said but we'll, we'll get over them and flush them out tonight and, and uh, have a sharp session on Thursday so we've got two sessions to prepare for for the game where crew have had that extra time off but it's not always a good thing you know you want to be playing and playing every week especially at this stage of the year so we'll go into it battle hardened. There's a, there's a lot been made of the Easter campaign over the last couple of years what, what are your thoughts on, on the amount of games that players have to play around this time of year? Oh well, we only have to play once this, this weekend I just think it's tradition in it and it, 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 I think I think one's right especially the, the level of sport you know if you look at the, the Championship and Super League, they've got to play Good Friday and Easter Monday, and just it's difficult. And it might not be the Monday that, that affects them. It might be the week after, the week after that when it catches up with you, you know, physically and mentally. It's um, it is it's a hard ask. I'm glad we've, we've got the one game, even playing Sunday Friday at, at this level. But we'll, we'll take some doing. So um, I'm glad we're just playing Good Friday. And finally, Crusaders have been going through some financial problems, and a lot of players have been offloaded to, to deal with that. Have you been offered any players to take on? Yeah, there's been plenty of agents ringing us up, um, but it's something we wouldn't do. I feel for them in that situation, and the coaching staff. Uh, I really respect, you know, Muzz and, 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 and the, the Crusaders club, and I think if you're taking two players, three players off them, I just, you know, it's not us. I know other clubs have done it, and it's probably panic signings as well. You know, when you're signing halfbacks or hookers at this stage of the year, you know, when you've had a full pre-season. Unless you're covering injuries, I, I don't really see any value in that, you know, from Rochdale Hornets' point of view. And I think it's a case here where we need to support them and not and not, you know, pillar them for players and, and, and take players off them. I'll definitely be speaking to Anthony on the weekend and offering him players on loan if they need them. Uh, it's a situation that they've not put in themselves, you know, in terms of the players and the coaches. It's come from mismanagement in the past. So there's a couple of players in pre-season we spoke to. Um, we didn't get them over the line, and, and as far as I'm concerned, that's gone. And a, a lot of people speaking about loyalty, you know, 
in pre-season from, from the Crusaders, but those same players haven't shown much lately in the last few weeks to leave the club. So um, that's our stance on it, but everyone's got a different opinion on it.